This class involves spinal twists as well as spinal extension. So we'll be creating a contraction through one side of our body, really strong through our core, and finding some length and extension through the opposite side to help us get into those twists, as well as creating something of a back bend shape. However, as we go throughout this class, I want you to always maintain the thoughts of length through the crown of the head rather than compressing your spine in order to create that C or U or crescent moon shape, however you want to think about it. We want to create lots of space in between each one of those little bones that makes up our spine and get as tall as we can, both in those twists as well as in those back bend heart openers. So as always, make everything yours. If you want to modify something, if you want to leave it out completely, if you feel called to intensify, you're a seasoned practitioner and you know what your body needs and what you are doing, do whatever it is that feels right for you. If you would like to have some blocks or another prop available, that's excellent for any time, any point in class that we might feel like we need an extra couple of inches to help our hands get to the floor or to bring our legs up or what have you. So go ahead and grab those now and meet me on your mat in a seated position. If you wanna sit with a block underneath your hips, that is an option. You can even put two blocks next to each other so you're not sitting on this little teeny tiny wedge. So you have a comfortable seat. We wanna be able to find that length through the crown of our head right away before we start anything else. So if you're closed off and you're having a lot of trouble sitting up, don't struggle there. Go ahead and give those blocks um, a shift underneath you and use them as an assistance so that we can target the areas that we wanna target. We don't wanna practice the things we don't wanna carry forward. So let's practice sitting up nice and tall. Go ahead and bring your hands to your knees or down alongside your body. We'll begin with a few breaths in here. So deep breath in, full belly expansion. Allow your chest to rise, your ribs to spread away from one another and lengthen through the crown of your head as if there is a string attached to the top, pulling you towards the ceiling. As you exhale, Pull your chin in ever so slightly. You might feel some lengthening in between your ears and your shoulders, and then allow your shoulders to fall down away from your ears. You can even give them a roll down and back. I also like to think about my shoulder blades drawing towards one another on my back. Again, deep breath in, full expansion. And out, heaviness through the shoulders. Knees falling towards the floor, chin pulling in. Again, breath in, length, length. And out. On your next breath in, press your chest forward, hinge at your hips, coming down towards your mat. And as you exhale, round through your body back. You can hold on to your knees or reach your arms out in front of you, chin in towards your chest. Breath in, find that spinal extension, chest down towards the floor, and breath out, spinal flexion rounding through your back. It's kind of like we're in a seated cat-cow. Inhale, this would be your cow back, and exhale, this would be your cat back. Again, chest broad, gaze out in front or towards the ceiling. Exhale, chin in towards your chest. Reach your arms out in front of you or use them on your knees as some leverage. And last one, inhale and exhale. Hands come back to the knees. Just gonna take a big circle around. Make sure that you get into that side body. Allow your gaze to shift. Maybe find a little bit of a twist as you come through here. Try to keep your knees down towards the floor rather than letting them rock on up with you. We really wanna isolate and wake up our spine, find that movement through our torso, our low back, the thoracic spine. After you've done a few circles in one direction, go ahead and switch again using your hands as needed, finding those twists, finding that extension, finding that flexion, 
allowing your gaze to lead the way. And meet me in the center, arms out in front of you. Take a little rock side to side before walking those hands in and bringing your arms up overhead. Breath in here, breath out. We're taking a twist to the left. So arms come parallel to the floor, shoulder blades squeeze towards one another, pull those low ribs in. Breath in, back through center. And out, twist it to the right, shoulder blades squeeze, navel drawn in, low ribs in. Breath in, center. Breath out, left. Center. Right. And last time each side, center to the left, reaching long fingertip to fingertip and to the right. This time as we come in through center, we're gonna take this to the left. Left fingertips come down behind your mat, right hand comes to that left knee. Give your shoulders a roll down and back. I like to press my fingertips against my knee and my knee against my fingertips to help kind of pull myself and encourage myself into that twist a little bit more. As you breathe in, lengthen crown of the head. As you breathe out, look back behind you. Another breath in and out. On your next breath in, root down through that left hand, right arm reaches overhead. So we're staying in this twist, but adding this heart opening element, shoulder blades squeeze towards one another, gaze can go up on the diagonal. As you exhale, close it off. So our fingertips are coming down to the ground. You're gonna come up on your left hand and then slide across the front of your mat taking it to the opposite side. My right hand plants down behind my hips, left arm circles open. So we are in that twisted reverse revolved position here. However, I'm gonna invite you to shift forward onto your shins, shifting your hips up to get a little more of a stretch and a little more space across the front side of your body. Tuck that tail under, open up through your chest, deep breath in. And as you exhale, hips come down. Your left hand comes to your right knee. We're in our seated twist here. So sit it up tall, breath in, breath out. Look over that shoulder, fingertips into the thigh, thigh into the fingertips, another breath in, length and out, twist. On your next breath in, root down through your right palm, left fingertips open up towards the ceiling and breath out, close off. Spin those hands out in front of you. We're taking that heart opener on the opposite side. Left hand grounds down, right arm opens, hip shift forward, press the floor away, and lower down into your twist. Right hand, left knee, sit up tall. Maybe you extend your left arm back behind you this time. Breath in and out, lower that hand down if it wasn't. Breath in, right arm opens, out, close off, glide across. As you inhale, right hand plants down, hip shift forward, left arm spins open. Exhale, sit it down into your twist, left hand, right knee, float the back palm, breath in. Breath out, hand lowers. Breath in, peel open. Breath out, glide across. Breath in, open it up, hips up. And breath out, sit it down, hand to knee. Breath in, extend. Breath out, lower that back arm. Breath in, raise the front arm. Breath out, close it off, spin in front. Breath in, hips up, arm sweeps overhead. Breath out, sit it down, hand to knee. Breath in, find that twist. Breath out, hand down. Breath in, raise the front arm. Breath out, glide across the front. Left hand to the floor, spin open, breath in. This time as you exhale, hips come down, bring your arms out in front of you and find a forward fold, little rock side to side. Walk those hands into a seated position and switch the leg that is in front. 
So we're not going to spend as much time on this side, but I want to have um, a little bit of movement with this opposite leg forward. So let's bring your hands back behind you, roll your shoulders back, press down into the floor, really lengthen through the front of your chest, broadening those collarbones, finding length through the crown of your head, option to come up onto those shins, finding that heart opener once again, deep breath in and out, lower down. Keep your right hand where it is, sweep that left hand over, lift those hips up once again and sit it down, left hand down, right hand sweeps, hips lift up, follow through that circle and lower down. Once more each side, inhale, lift the left hand, circle around, find the floor, lift the right hand, circle around and find the floor. Bring those arms out in front of you, maybe wide, wider than your mat, shift side to side, put a bend through those elbows and drop one shoulder in towards center line and the opposite shoulder in. And now we're gonna come into a tabletop. So I just bring my hands out in front, unwind my legs. That doesn't work for you. Kick your legs off to the side and find your table however you need to. Tuck those toes under, shift your hips toward your heels. If you need a little more room, walk your hands forward about a palm's distance. Bring your weight forward, perhaps straighten through those legs, pull your chest forward, breath in and breath out. Send those hips back, forehead down to your mat again bringing it forward, something of a cobra pose, and bring it back into a child's pose. And last time, Bhujangasana and Balasana. Come back through your tabletop, make sure those toes are tucked to lift and hover your knees, and then send your hips high, heels towards the floor, downward facing dog, pedal it out, figure eight your hips, shift yourself side to side, and now let's walk our feet up to our hands. You can have a generous bend through the knees. And I'm gonna invite you to send your feet wide either side of your mat, wide leg, forward fold. Take a little rock side to side, reach for opposite elbows. Allow the crown of your head to hang heavy towards the floor. Release those hands. You might need to bring your feet in a little bit closer. We want our heels below our hips. Toes out ever so slightly. Sit your hips down, coming through a malasana. Hands out in front for support if you need it. Try to keep those heels on the floor even if you're not down so low. And then straighten through those legs. Turn your heels in line with your toes. Breath in, turn your heels in. Lower your hips down, hands heart center if you can. Breath out, straighten your legs, heels in line with toes, hips high. Inhale, heels in, drop the hips. Exhale, heels out, hips high. And again, inhale, malasana. Exhale, wide leg forward fold. Right hand plants below the face. As you take a breath in, reach toward the ceiling with your left fingertips. We want the twist to be happening through our chest, not through our hips. So hip points facing down towards the floor, chest faces to the left, and then extend that arm out towards the ceiling, gaze follows. As you exhale, close it off, switch it out, left hand down on a block on fingertips, twist through the chest, and then inhale, extend your arm towards the ceiling. Exhale, fold it forward, heel toe those feet back in, want to be about hips width here, so about two fists in between your feet. If you're not at the front of your mat, take a little shift towards the front. Drop your hips down, bring your arms up overhead, chair pose, tuck through the tail, low ribs drawn in. Exhale, fold it forward. Inhale, find that chair, and exhale, fold. And again, inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. This time as you inhale, roll up, arms rise overhead. Exhale, chair pose, sweep your hands towards the left side of your mat. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, sit those hips, sweep your hands towards the right side. Again, inhale, rise. 
Exhale, sweep left. Inhale and rise. Exhale, sweep right. Once more each side, press down into the pinky edges of your feet, legs pressing down and away. Opposite side. This time as we rise up, stay. Hands heart center. Take a moment, collect yourself. Wiggle some things out if you need to. And let's bring those arms back up overhead. Exhale, find your chair with your prayer hands. Press your palms in towards one another. Look to the left, twist the chest to the left, and then hook your elbow on the top of your left thigh. Chair twist. Let's inhale, rise up. Chair twist to the right, drop it down. Chest to the right, hook the elbow, feet pressing down and away from one another. Do not let your knees collapse in towards center line. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist to the right. One more time, inhale. Exhale, twist left. Center. To the right. Bring it up through center. Find your twist to the left. We're adding on now. So all of the weight in that left foot, press the top hand into the bottom hand to look to the left or up towards the ceiling over that left shoulder. Float your right heel up and then glide that leg back into your twisted high lunge. Option to stay with your prayer hands or extend the arms. Take a breath in, length through the crown, breath out, twist, ribs draw in. With your next breath in, reverse revolve, high lunge. So we're just switching the arms. You have to stay really strong through the core here. Ooh, legs stay just as they are. Right fingertips to the ceiling, left fingertips down towards the floor. Maybe you wrap them around for the bind. Get a lot of length through your side body. Deep breath in. As you exhale, a few things are gonna happen. Windmill the arms, square through the chest, back heel comes down, straighten through the front leg, rock back onto the front heel, pivot the toes to the side. Arms rise up, star pose. As you exhale, side lunge to the back. I like to spin my heel in a little bit here, that helps me out. You can pull your front toes up. It's gonna help us with our next transition. I'm kind of in a modified Skandasana flying monkey. You can also come down low if that is in your practice, hand supported or unsupported. Breath in brings us to a warrior two. So straighten through your back leg, front toes come down, make sure they're facing forward. Those back toes, they're facing the long edge of your mat or at a 45 degree angle. Arms parallel to the floor. With your breath in, reverse the arms, take a bind, right hand behind the back or into the hip crease, left fingertips toward the back of the room, and exhale, cartwheel the arms, pivot on your back toes, shift the weight forward, step forward. Inhale to rise, exhale, chair twist to the right, bend through those knees. Breath in to lengthen, breath out to twist. Another breath in, find all of that length, draw your shoulder blades towards one another. Breath out, glide your left leg back. Option to stay with prayer hands or extend the arms, right fingertips towards the ceiling, left towards the floor. Let's inhale, reverse, revolve, high lunge. Reach around for that thigh, for your hip crease. Reach your left fingertips towards the back of the room and exhale to our star facing the opposite side. Unwind, square, heel down, straighten, rock back, pivot the toes, arms rise. Exhale, side lunge to the back or your skandasana to the back. Back heel can spin in, front toes can lift up, hands can come down for support. Warrior two. Bend through your front leg, back toes spin in, make sure front toes are facing forward, arms parallel to the floor. Let's reverse, right fingertips toward the back, and exhale, cartwheel those hands. We've got to pivot on the back toes, 
Step it forward. Inhale to rise. And exhale, chair twist to the left. Breath in to stay. Breath out, glide your right foot back. Breath in to open. Breath out to twist. Breath in, reverse revolve. Breath out, heel down, straighten toes up, pivot. Breath in, arms rise. Breath out, back heel in, front toes up. Skandasana. Breath in, warrior two. Breath out, we're dropping that reverse. Cartwheel the hands, shift the weight forward. Breath in to rise. Breath out, chair twist to the right. Breath in for length. Breath out, twist, step that leg back. Breath in to open. Breath out to twist. Breath in, reverse revolve, high lunge. Breath out, unwind, star to the left side. Breath in, arms rise. Breath out, skandasana or side lunge. Breath in, switch your bend, arms parallel, warrior two. Breath out, cartwheel, square hip, step forward. Breath in to rise. Breath out, left side. Breath in, length. Breath out, glide the foot back. Breath in, extend. Breath out, twist. Breath in, reverse, revolve. Breath out, pivot heel, pivot front toes. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, back heel down. Skandasana or side lunge. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, cartwheel, step forward. Inhale, rise. Exhale, chair twist, right. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale. Find that twist, find that glide back. Inhale, lengthen the arms. Keep your thigh pressing against the elbow, okay? Weight picky edge of the feet. Reverse. Exhale as you cartwheel. Spin the back heel down. Spin the front toes to the side. Arms rise, breath in. Breath out. Squat it down to the back. Breath in. Warrior two and out cartwheel pivot step again arms rise exhale chair twist inhale stay exhale glide it back inhale extend arms exhale twist into it inhale reverse revolve exhale cartwheel position the feet inhale arms rise exhale skandasana to the back. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, cartwheel, step. Inhale, arms. Exhale, chair right. Inhale, length. Exhale, glide. Inhale, arms. Exhale, stay. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, square yourself up, pivot side. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, bring it down. Inhale, bring it forward. Exhale, cartwheel, step. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, stay. Hands, heart center, hands to the heart, hands to the belly, or down by your sides. We just did a lot of moving. You might be breathing heavy, you might be sweating. You might have the urge to keep moving around. I want you to find that composure, find that stillness, resist the urge to do anything else. Feel your feet down on your mat or on your ground. Maybe lift and spread those toes out, root down through the balls of your feet, as well as the heels. Soft bend through those knees if they're locked out. Slight tuck through the tail if it's kicking back behind you. Slight draw in of the low ribs if they are flared out in front of you. Roll down and back of the shoulders, palms facing forward if they are down by your sides. Chin drawn in, length through the crown.
take a moment, absorb everything that's going on. Notice any sensations, maybe the sweat on your skin, the temperature of the room, the cadence of your breath, the depth of it. If it feels erratic, try to lengthen your inhales and your exhales. Just allowing one to flow into the next. Bring those arms up overhead. Exhale, press your chest forward, weight into the balls of your feet, cactus through those arms, and then sit it down through a chair pose, hands heart center, weight onto the balls of the feet as your heels come up into a toe stand. Coming down into a seated position here. So I like to counterbalance my weight, open my knees, and then as controlled as I can, come down into a seat. It might be easier for you. It might seem impossible. Just use your hands if you need to. Soles of the feet together, Baddha Konasana, butterfly pose, knees fall open. Sit up tall for just a moment, reach for those feet, maybe pinky edges, or you can thread underneath in those little V shapes that you made and bring your nose towards your toes. Keep that length through the crown of your head though, always shifting forward rather than rounding out. Let's sit up, knees come together, legs extend out in front of you. They're gonna be off your mat. We're gonna make our way towards the back. This one's for your obliques, it's also kind of fun, okay? So we're going to lift one leg, shift it back, lift the other, shift it back. Do whatever you need to do with your arms. You can have them down by your sides, little loot walk. If it's not happening today, practice it a few times, it'll happen, it'll happen. So we're lifting, shifting, lifting, pulling back, lifting, pulling back, lifting, pulling back. Once you've got enough space, your heels are on your mat, that's where we're gonna stay. Let's bring our left heel in, sit up nice and tall. You can bring your left hand behind you if you'd like, reach your arm up towards the ceiling, and as you exhale, hook that elbow on the outside of your left thigh. Make sure that you're pressing your knee out though, don't let it collapse in. Press it out against the elbow. Inhale, and exhale, maybe twist a little bit deeper. So you can stay here with your breath or turn your thumb down, pull those toes up, reach for the pinky edge of your foot. If that's a lot, bring your arm on the inside. That's okay too, rather than on the outside of the knee. From here, lift that heel up off the floor. This is a good place to stay for some of us. Maybe float those back fingertips and extend them out long towards the back of the room. Keep those toes active, keep your left toes up towards the ceiling rather than turning in. Stay here or extend that left leg. Draw those shoulder blades towards one another, lengthen through the crown of your head. If this feels like a lot, you might bend through your opposite knee. Might help you have a little more range here. Let's take another breath in. And as you exhale, control, control, control. Heel comes down toward the floor. Keep that reach back behind you. Press into the blade edge of the foot to encourage your body to twist a little bit more. Extend your left fingertips overhead. It's gonna come a point where you need to square up, allow it to happen. Reach for the inside of that foot and then lift it back up. Arms are crossed one over the other. Pull that chin in towards your nose. Deep breath in and out. Let's lower down again with control and then release. Let's do the opposite side. Right foot in, right hand behind, left arm up. Hook, find your twist, lengthen, press the knee against the elbow. Don't let it collapse in. Weight and pinky edge of the foot. My legs are about hips width here. Option to stay or reach around for the pinky edge, either outside of that knee or bring it inside so you've got a little more room. Lift, option to stay with your twist, float up onto the back fingertips, extend the arm back behind you, shoulders down and back, shoulder blades squeezing together. 
Option two, extend that leg, maybe lift it up a bit higher. You can even bend through that left arm, pulling your toes up a bit closer towards your face. Deep breath in. And as you exhale, lower down with control. Press into the pinky edge of your foot. Look back behind you. Reach as if you're trying to reach something at the back of the room. And as you exhale, big sweep overhead. Keep those sits bones rooted to the floor. Cross your right arm over the left thumb down. Fold it forward, bend through those elbows if you have it available to you. And then let's lift this back up. Breath in, length, breath out. Find your stretch, pull it in a little bit closer. You can always bend that bottom leg if you need a little more, little more stability. Again, breath in. And exhale, let's lower it down, this time staying in our forward fold, uncrossing our arms, driving crown of the head towards our toes, belly toward the tops of the thighs. If you have your feet easily, blocks on the soles of your feet, or reach for opposite feet, thumbs down, and then pull yourself closer. Make sure you're flexing through your foot as well. Come back up. We're going to add some core work today. So hands can come behind you for support. We're bending our legs. You want to try to maintain length through the crown of your head here as well. If you don't need the support, hands in heart center. Go ahead and float your heels up off the floor. If this doesn't work for you, just one, and then we'll alternate. If you are floating, bent knees is less intense. Straight legs, more intense. We're going to scissor our legs one on top of the other. Keep the low ribs drawn in. Let's take a look at your midsection. If you're getting this bread dome, pull everything in, support or back off. We don't want to um, create any more separation, especially if you are a woman that has had kids. Uh, that might be something you want to be aware of. We don't want that bread dome, okay? So keep on going, keep on going. And then stop with your legs straight. We're going to bend one knee, pull it in and extend. Bend the other, extend. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. You ready for more? Both in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. One more, one more. We're going to bring our knees to the side and the side, side side. Things might be crackling. Things might be popping. This is a lot on our hip flexors if we are not used to this. Three, two, one. Ooh. Lower those legs down. Give them a little shake out. If you need to massage something or kind of, you know, knock the life back into it, go ahead and do that. And then we're going to take a fish pose. So I like my hands more like a W. Some people like them like a diamond. You bring them underneath your sacrum here, underneath that tailbone. Lower your forearms down to the mat. Roll those shoulders back. Press your chest forward towards the ceiling. Gaze goes up. You can point through your toes if you would like. You can drop your head back, but stay in a pain-free range. We don't want to be just dropped back like that. Find length through the crown of your head always. If you can't speak, without your, your voice getting all crinkled up, we're compressing. We don't want to do that. All right, another breath in here. And out. Breath in. And out. Chin comes in towards your chest. We're gonna come down onto our backs from here. Lower your head down, pull your knees in. Go ahead and extend your legs up towards the ceiling. Palms can come out to the side or alongside your body for some support. Go ahead and bend one leg and then the other, or go ahead and helicopter your legs. Make sure you go in both directions. And then extend your legs up long again. Give them a shake out, nice little shake. I like to flex through my feet. Everything is shaking, you can hear it in my body. It's like our our skin is all vibrating along our bones, okay? Kind of a little recalibration at the end here. 
you've got pets, if you spend a lot of time around animals, one thing you're gonna notice animals do all the time is shake. They get tense, they see something, they're like, what is that? You know, where they're playing, you know, they're all involved. You can get your arms involved here too. And then they're ready to shift gears, to transition to something else. They shake, they shake it off. We don't do a lot of that. So we're gonna do it here. All right, you can shake for as long as you need to. But if you are feeling ready, find some stillness. Your body might feel like it's shaking still. If you've got those legs up, make sure your low back is maintaining contact with the floor. You can always have a bend through your knees if that is uncomfortable or let your feet come down. That's all right. Let's all bend our knees, bring them in towards your chest. Take a little circle around. One direction and then the other. At this point in the class, if there's more movement that you would like to do, pause this video and add it in. Otherwise, we are going to find our final resting position. You can let your feet come down and knees fall in. If you want a little bit of internal rotation at the hip, external rotation, soles of the feet together, knees open, traditional, Corpse pose, Savasana. You might lie on your side or on your belly. Maybe you want to take a recline twist and spend some of the time there. Wherever you have found yourself, make yourself comfortable. Allow it to feel easy. Close your eyes. Soften your gaze. And simply be where you are. Our postural practice is meant to get us to this point here to clear out all of the energy in order to allow us to be still. And to be free of distraction so that we may be able to notice the things that come up for us, the thoughts that move through our minds, the sensations that our physical body allows us to experience and the one that does the watching within each and every one of us. invite the movement back into our body, wiggling our fingers and our toes, making some fists pointing and flexing through the feet, lengthening through the crown of the head, reaching our arms overhead, maybe taking a side bend one side to the other. Let's bend our knees, soles of the feet to our mats. 
bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly. Coming back to our breath, deep breath in. Allow your belly and your chest to rise up into your palm. And breath out to melt away. Breath in, full expansion, taking up the space. And breath out, releasing. Breath in, drawing in opportunity. And breath out, creating space for what comes next. make our way onto our side. And in your own time, come back up into a seated position. Once finding yourself there, taking a moment to acknowledge your practice and to express gratitude to your body, to your constant companion, You've got to engage in that conversation with it. It's a give and a take. One of the ways that we do that is with our movement practice, coupled, of course, with the rest so that we are able to sustain it. Coming back to our breath. Our breath is one of the most valuable tools that we have available to us because it is the link between our autonomic and our sympathetic nervous system. It's something that we can both control intentionally and also is a result of what we do. So it's a way that we can kind of hack what's going on with the rest of our bodies. It's that bridge that allows us to influence our physical responses to a stimulus. And that is why that it is such an integral part in our movement practice. We have a lot going on. Our body is building a lot of heat. It might be struggling. It might be moving into things that are very unfamiliar, things that are challenging. And we are able to tell it what we would like it to do that we would like it to regain its composure and its stability and its strength as we connect with the flow of the breath and create some intention behind it. So as you go throughout your day, I'm going to encourage you to take a moment here and there and notice how it is you are breathing in response to different situations. When you find yourself in different places, maybe in the pickup line um, at your kid's school or in traffic at rush hour or delivering a speech at work or maybe just cutting the potatoes for dinner. I'm going to encourage you to notice how it is you're breathing. Notice the depth. Notice the cadence. Notice if it's smooth or if it's jagged. Notice if it's supporting whatever it is that you want to manifest in that circumstance, or if it's fueling the fire, if it's stoking anxiety or concern or worry or something that you'd rather not have in that moment. And see what being intentional in those seconds and minutes and instances does for you. So this is going to wrap up our practice for today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. 
If you'd like to connect outside of YouTube, place to do that is Instagram. My hashtag is at STM underscore yoga. It's where I share class times if you are interested in a live class as well as various events as well as ideas for flows and just conversation starters to get that sense of community going and to get input from others. So until next time, I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you here again soon.